All right, everybody, it's Mr. Langdell here. I'm going to talk to you about a little bit of physics. And I'm joined by my most excellent Belgian friend, Monsieur Hercule Poirot, who is one of my favorite detectives from the Agatha Christie detective novels. And he's here because we're going to be doing some analyzing. We're going to be trying to figure out some graphical analysis work. There's three types of graphs we're going to deal with in Physics 20. In Unit A, we're going to deal with our distance versus time graph. We've done a bit of those earlier in the unit already. We're going to deal with some velocity versus time graphs. And this is a little bit of a new one, some acceleration versus time graphs. And we're going to look at five possible cases where we can have different types of motion that is pretty much going to encompass everything that you could come up against, I think, in Physics 20. So let's take a look at the first case. First case, no movement. This is when something is standing still. Now, what's the distance time graph for that going to look like? Well, pretty simply put, it's a nice horizontal line. The displacement is not changing, so if this is something like 10 meters, it means that that object is staying at 10 meters and is not moving anywhere. So, what does your velocity time graph look like for that? Well, it's pretty simple, really. It doesn't look like anything, because if you are not moving, you don't have a velocity, so you have no velocity time graph. And ditto for the acceleration. I mean, if you don't have any velocity, you don't have any change in velocity, so you don't have any acceleration. Remember, no movement still counts as uniform motion because the motion is uniform. The velocity of zero stays the same. Okay, we've, we've dealt with that a little bit already. That's not too bad. Let's look at case two, constant velocity. And you notice I've got a positive sign here because I'm going to talk about velocity in the positive direction. So, um, you know, that could be to the right or that could be to the east or north or something like that. So, displacement versus time graph. What's this going to look like? Well, if it's a constant velocity, we are going to have a straight line. Diagonal, but straight. And in this case, because the displacement is increasing, as time increases, we've got positive velocity. What does that look like in a velocity time graph? Well, it's going to be, again, a horizontal line, kind of like our displacement time graph was in the last example. The difference here is, in order to figure out whatever point this is going to be at, maybe this is 5 meters per second. How do we know that it's 5 meters per, per second? From looking at this graph, well, what we'd have to do is pick two points off the line. We'd have to find the slope. The slope of our distance time graph is going to tell us what the velocity of the velocity time graph is. What about our acceleration time graph? Well, take a look. Acceleration is a change in velocity. Do you see any change? Poirot, do you see any change? He doesn't see any change. So there is no graph here. There's no acceleration time graph. Remember, one of the most important ideas here, when you find the slope of a distance, or it could be a displacement time graph, you're going to get velocity. All right, well, that's not too bad. Let's look at case three. In case three, we're dealing with constant velocity, but in the negative direction. So what does that look like? There's our distance time graph. Looks a little like that. Still straight, but downhill now. Here's our velocity time graph. Still horizontal, but notice it's at something like maybe negative 10 meters per second. It's below the x-axis. And you guessed it. If there's no change in velocity, there can't be an acceleration time graph. And of course, we could find the slope of our distance time graph. And that slope, again, would be exactly the same as the velocity we need for our velocity time graph. Case four, what about a constant acceleration? What if we have accelerated motion? Well, as we looked at in the lesson on acceleration, if this is a positive acceleration, we're going to get a curve that looks like this. Now. What can we do with this equation? What can, we, or what can we do with this graph, rather? Well, we can do a couple of things. We can figure out velocities at different points by working out a tangent. If we want found the slope of that tangent, that slope will give us velocities. If we did this two or three times, or really as many times as you wanted to, you could get a bunch of velocities that you could then go and plot. And what you would get is a nice diagonal straight line. So we go from curved to diagonal. Now, what's the acceleration going to be? Well, take a look. Our velocity is increasing in a regular rate as our time increases. So now we're going to have an acceleration time graph. It's going to be nice and horizontal. So the pattern is curved, diagonal, horizontal. You're going to see that come up a lot. 
And again, how do we find our acceleration time graph? Like, how do we know what this point is? If this was 7.5 meters per second squared, how would we know that from our velocity time graph? We take two points from our velocity time graph, we find the slope. The slope of our velocity time graph is going to be the same as the acceleration in the acceleration time graph. Again, so important. This is the analyzing the graph from the graphical analysis. We find some information from one graph, we can use it to build another graph. Okay, I said there's going to be four, five cases, so here's the last one. What about a negative constant acceleration? Well, that means we're going to slow down. So I don't know, why don't, we start, why don't we start backwards and work our way back? So negative acceleration, here it is, below the x-axis, or the, the t-axis, I guess, for time. What about our velocity time graph? Well, that's going to be going like this. Okay, slowing, 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 slowing down. Um, and our displacement time graph is going to be curved, looking like that. Again, going from curved to diagonal to below the x-axis. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what some of these graphs mean. How can we take one graph and turn it into another one? And so just by following some of these tips and using a bit of, uh, of thinking, you can figure out what a lot of graphs are talking about. Hope that helps. And if you have any questions, make sure you check out the section of notes on the website graphical analysis.